everybody. Happy April Fool's Day. So listen, uh, this topic today is April Fool's Day. And I did a little research and nobody really knows the origin of April Fool's Day. But it goes back all the way back to the 16th century. And it's really popular. It's celebrated across Europe, in the Nordic Scandinavian countries, in Ukraine, Poland, Turkey, Iran, Israel, Lebanon, UK, Ireland, and has a very illustrious history, some great pranks over the years. And this first one, I actually saw this video. In 1957, the BBC filmed coverage of the Swiss spaghetti farm harvest, where they actually had video footage of farmers harvesting spaghetti off of trees. And it was so successful and done with such a straight face that many, many people wrote in wanting to buy the spaghetti plants. <laughs> I like that one. In 1956, a rhinoceros named Rubbish was actually elected to a city council seat in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That was a real election and a real win. In 1996, the Taco Bell company announced with the full page ads in some big newspapers that it had purchased the Liberty Bell for a whole lot of money to help the country out in paying its national debt. And they were changing the name to the Taco Liberty Bell. I like that one a lot. Um, in 2016, National Geographic magazine made an announcement that it would no longer be posting photos of naked animals. <laughs> and in 2016, the famous pornography website Pornhub on April 1st, changed its name to Corn Hub and only showed photos of corn for that day. In 2018, they changed the name for a day on April Fool's Day to Horn Hub. And they only showed pictures of women who were blowing, you know, horns, actual horns. So I thought that that's kind of classy and funny. I've always liked April Fool's Day. And here's some of my favorite pranks that I've pulled. Um, when Kaya was in kindergarten, the night before April Fool's Day, I put a plaster cast on her arm and we spun this whole story about how she fell down rollerblading or roller skating or whatever it was. And uh, everybody signed her cast. Her mother and I weren't together. So we made up this whole story and I manufactured an emergency room bill so that she could pay half of it. And Kaya, my daughter, totally milked it for everything. You know, oh, it really hurts. I need more ice cream. And then, of course, the next day, she went into school and didn't have a cast on. So that was fun for her. Um, also, <laughs> when Kaya was in pre-kindergarten, her teacher knew that she was a vegetarian and had a different kind of diet. And I was always bringing things in for her and for the other kids to try. And on April Fool's Day, one year, I um, I brought in some non-alcoholic beer, which was just new on the market. It wasn't common knowledge that there was such a thing. And I told the teacher that Kaya's doctor had prescribed that she needed to drink beer uh, as a vegetarian or something for with her meals. And I didn't want the other kids to feel left out. And before the teacher could process anything, I had little cups out and I poured non-alcoholic beer for all the kids, and that was a big hoot. Then one year, where I worked, I was known to, you know, enjoy April Fool's Day. And so the people said, let's really pull one on Andy. And somehow they got a hold of my car keys, which I left in my satchel or something, and they moved my car. And then they returned the keys, knowing that when I went out to look for my car, it wouldn't be there. And I would freak out and then they could say, April Fool's. But I knew what they had done. So I, I got all freaked out. My car is not there. And I pretended to call the police. And while I was on the phone pretending to call to the police, they were confessing that it was just a prank and a trick. And I said, oh, man, why would you do that? It's too late. I already called 911. They're going to come here. I'm going to get in trouble. And so they they were so sorry. They felt like shit. They felt terrible. And I said, well, where's my car? And so they went out to where they had moved my car. 
but unbeknownst to them, I had moved it to a third location. And so they started freaking out, saying, oh, my God, his car is really stolen. And so it's a good thing that the police is coming. And after a little time, you know, everybody was so confused. It was just great, great chaos. Another one that I'm that I remember fondly when I used to work in the hospital, we were being taught about cultural sensitivity, you know, this and that. And we made up this whole patient. His name was Lou Falirpa. He was a Tibetan priest who was on tour or a monk or something. And we told the nurse that was his nurse that it was really important that she go into his room with her head covered with a candle between her hands. And she needed to chant Lou Falirpa, Lou Falirpa. And she went into the room, which was dark, only to have the lights go on, and somebody took her picture. And of course, Lou Falirpa is April Fool spelled backwards. So we really got her. Then I forgot another one, because when I was in the fifth grade, I told the teacher that I had won this coupon for some free something, and I had already done it i'd already been there and i wanted to give this coupon away i wanted to share it with some friends but it wasn't enough for everybody so i would like to do a little contest and then the the winner would get the coupon and she said all right what do you want to do so i divided the i divided the room into two halves the group and i went around saying i was going to whisper different numbers into different people's ears and then i was going to call out one number from one side one number from the other side and the first of the two people to come into the middle to get the coupon would get the coupon. But unbeknownst to everybody else and the teacher, I gave everybody on one side of the room the same number and everybody on the other side of the room the same number. So when I called out the two numbers, everybody jumped over the desk and knocked things over to get the coupon. And they were so excited about it, they ended up tearing it up. And the teacher never knew what hit her. You know, that just that just made me feel so good. And I tell you, that teacher never looked at me the same way after that. You know, in the era of fake news, to actually have fake news on purpose in a lighthearted way, you know, we, we need it. Children are involved in make-believe all the time. And in fact, I think adults are involved in make-believe all the time. We might as well be playful with everything, don't you think? And so I'm in favor of having a day devoted to doing foolish things. You know, one of the original origin stories that has often been cited as the origin story of April Fool's Day was that in some kingdom somewhere, the court jesters that worked for the king challenged the king. They said, we could rule this place better than you. And so the king lightheartedly agreed and let them be the rulers for an entire day. And the first thing that they did was pass legislation to mandate that every year be celebrated by doing foolish things. And this story was often cited to be the actual origin story, but it was in itself a fake story that somebody had made up. So good on them, huh? All right, thank you. Have fun.